Talk Zone presents the Geek Speak Radio Show with your hosts, Henry and Romo. Your top spot for everything entertainment and pop culture, including TV, movies, comics, casting news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Henry and Romo. Welcome back. Second hour of the Geek Speak Radio Show. I'm Henry. Today is officially being known as Madden Day, meaning Madden 2011 was released. Today. People were out there, and I saw them in lines at <laughs> you know Best Buy's, Walmart's, all those, all those stores waiting for the game. Everybody's been out there since midnight. Everybody's probably playing right now. It's probably mm-hmm. not getting that many calls. Everybody's online pl- playing <laughs> their, uh, you know, with their friends and everything. But serious topic. I mean, we laugh about it and all, but people don't take it seriously. They laugh it off and they just stop playing. That's video game addiction, where you can pretty much lose your life, lose everything, really, if you do nothing but play video games, whether it be online or through, you know, one of the game consoles that you have out there. So on the line, I'm going to have, I'm going to talk to Ryan Van Cleve. Ryan wrote a book, Unplugged, My Journey into the Dark World of Video Game Addiction. And I had you on today because, as I mentioned, Madden 2011 was released today. StarCraft 2 was released last week. A lot of people are spending way too much time, of course they wouldn't say that, but way too much time just playing it and forgetting about the real life. Uh, you had some experiences on that. Tell us a little bit about that, then we'll get to know you, Ryan. Sure. Well, I, I can just tell you, I, you know, I, I interact with a lot of people who are gamers and you know, people around the lives of gamers these days, and I can think of at least 20 or 30 people who canceled work today, called in sick to play games like this. And I used to be one of them, you know, back when... Uh, Oh, well, I guess it was Burning Crusade came out for uh, World of Warcraft a couple of years ago. You know, it was one of those things you, you start <clears throat> the day before so people don't, you know, surprised. And, you know, you spend a day or two home and you just play the heck out of the game. And people did it last week. You know, StarCraft sold a million copies in 24 hours, which sounds like a lot, by the way. But it's nothing like what the Warcraft games were doing. When the last expansion came out, Wrath of the Lich King, 2.8 million in 24 hours. And that's a lot of people who are buying it and playing it that day. They're not working. They're not hanging out with their kids. They are spending their time, you know, gaming the heck out of that thing. And it's the sort of thing, too, that a lot of the older games, you know, back when you get Mario or, you know, some of these others, you play it for 10 or 15 hours or, you know, a couple of days, and you're kind of done with it. With a lot of these newer games, you know, they've got a better replay value. So you keep going back to them. So it's not like it's uh, one and done. You know, these things are just the beginning of sort of the commitment we're making to our our gaming lives. So let, let's get into this. Um, first of all, you sound like a normal guy, nice guy and everything, a lot of people listening to mine, they're probably thinking, an addict, this guy? Nah, it doesn't sound like it. That, but that's, that's it, right? Uh, you don't, the people who you don't, you don't think can be addicts are pro- probably it's the guy in the cubicle next to you who, who can be an addict, correct? Uh, addiction is like one of the biggest secrets that we have. We just don't know who has it. You know, you don't know if the person next to you is an alcoholic or a sex addict or, you know, a lot of these things you, you keep close to yourself. You just don't share them with people. They're private sort of, um, deals that you've got. And I gotta tell you, there's, there's no profile for a video game addict. It can be anybody. I mean, most people think of the stereotypical, you know, overweight, uh, you know, pimply 17-year-old kid who, like, lurks around in the dark in his parents' basement playing Xbox 360 till his fingers are bleeding. But that's, that's not it. The average gamer is 35 years old and has been gaming for more than a decade. You know, we've got uh, just the story just broke just this week about that NFL player who spent two years outside of the NFL playing video games because he was too scared. He was, you know, he's upset, a lot of different things. And one day he just said, that's enough. And he broke his games. He snapped them. He burned them. And now he's, uh, you know, he's on training camp. He's going to probably make the NFL again. But for two years, a guy who has that kind of unique, you know, genetic predisposition of the body and the skill and the ability to play in the NFL, he burned two years of the way playing video games. So it's not just, you know, it's not just some regular geeky kid. It's anybody. Right. So tell us about you. How, what, what was your early life like? Oh, my early life was like a lot of people's, you know, I'm in my 30s now. I grew up with the, uh, you know, the advent of all these technology things that we've got with games and home computers. I remember before we had them, I watched them come into the homes. And like a lot of people, I, you know, I tried all them out. A lot of my friends were playing. My brother played. Everybody played. It was just what you did. You know, everybody had an Atari or you later got a Nintendo or the Super Nintendo or, you know, you always just had a system around as what you did. And it really wasn't that big of a deal or part of my life until I probably got into college. You know, I played a lot and I would go on little benders and play for a weekend with a game or something in high school. But it was in college where I really started to play at what I would call now an inappropriate level. And it comes from two factors, I think. 
when you get to college, there's such a abundance of technology there. I mean, at most schools, you have to have your own laptop now. And even if you don't, or if you, you know, if you break your laptop or something, you have 24 hour computer labs all over the place. They're in the dorms. You just go to the basement or wherever it is. It's convenient. It's right there. There's usually 30 of them lined up, all hooked together. So it's real easy to have access to the games and the technology. And the other thing is, too, that for a lot of people, that's the first big chunks of unsupervised free time you've ever had in your life. So if you want to game all night, drink beer, and, you know, play with 12 friends until 2 a.m. or 2 p.m., you can do it. So you can develop some pretty bad habits there that just don't really work well in the real world. And for some of us, you know, once you leave and and you leave college, you go off and you try to have a job or a family or a girlfriend or boyfriend or something, you can still game like you did before for a little while. But there's a certain point where you realize, I just don't have enough hours in the day anymore. You know, it's not just put in your six hours for classes and you're done. You got other things to do. And then that's where you start to make decisions. And for a lot of us, though, we were choosing the video game. It's something we enjoyed or we think we enjoy. It gives us some kind of pleasures. And uh, it gives us a sense of power we don't have in the real world or respect or achievement. There's a lot of uh, factors that go into this. But uh, what we end up doing is stealing time from the things that probably used to matter to us and and don't much anymore. Your friends, your family, um, your health, things like this, your work. For you, was it in college or what point did you realize, yes, I'm an addict? And as uh, the book starts, you started actually on a very low note. You started on a bridge and not you know, watching the sites or anything. So tell us about that. Well, this is a good 10 years after college. You know, I've been kind of burning the candle at both ends for a long time and not really thinking much about it. I mean, the thing about addiction is if you have one, more times than not, you don't realize you have one. You just think it's normal behavior. It's real easy to justify gaming as, well, you know what, I'm not out smoking pot, right? You know, I'm not out with some drug dealers on a corner. You know, I'm just staying home. You know, I'm staying out of trouble. I'm just enjoying my time. Game, it's like Monopoly. It's like leisure time. I mean, why can't I use my own leisure time as I choose? So it's real easy to just think of them as harmless. And so, you know, even though I was playing too much and ignoring my friends and my family and my work and my health, uh, you know, it went for about 10 years before it started to become an issue. And then after a while, all those other things that were so out of balance that they all started to, you know, fall apart. You know, my, my family wasn't calling me much anymore. They wouldn't visit. Uh, I didn't, my friends weren't calling or coming by. You know, I had a great job for a while there. The job went away. Uh, my wife was unhappy. And even after all of those, what would sound like really obvious signals of imbalance and real problems, you know, none of it really clicked to me. I mean, it only took, uh, I guess, a combination of all that. And then even more later, it was, we're talking about Christmas of 2007 is where it started to really kind of come together. This is after playing at a ridiculous level, you know, 30, 40 hours a week or more for years, years and years. I finally realized after coming back from Christmas, I was living in George, um, in Washington, D.C. at the time. I was teaching at George Washington University, and it was about a day and a half trip from Chicago down. And uh, I was, we were like on you know side roads and things. I didn't have any internet connection. The cell phone wasn't working. And I felt like a three-pack-a-day smoker having a massive Nick fit. I'm like, you know, can I pull over into some hotel for just an hour? Or can, you know, a Wi-Fi hotspot, can I find it? I kept thinking this is really inappropriate. And even that didn't really click with me. It was only a couple days later, it was New Year's Eve of 2007, where my wife and I had a fight about, you know, you stop playing that damn game. It's like, no, 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 I'll do what I want. You know, you shut up, you shut up. Just one of these, you know, go nowhere yelling matches, which we've had hundreds of times before that was all centered around gaming and gaming time. And I ended up just kind of, you know, storming out of the house into a kind of an ice storm walking around in Washington, D.C. And I found myself standing on the Arlington Memorial Bridge, staring into the Potomac and thinking, you know, my life is wildly out of control you know, I might as well just jump. And then I'm like, you know, do I really mean that? And then I started realizing how much my life currently wasn't the life that I ever wanted to have. And I didn't even recognize who I was being at that point anymore. And I realized the only way to ever change that was to make some significant differences in my life. And that started with, um, you know, a recommitment to things that mattered and that didn't include gaming anymore. So I had to cancel my Warcraft account. I had to, you know, like Quinn Pitcock did, the NFL guy, I threw away a lot of the discs. I burned some of them. You know, I got rid of them all. I boxed them up, put them in the attic, and, you know, got rid of them, deleted them off the machine. And then for the next week or two, though, I I was in terrible shape. I was still used to gaming. I couldn't turn my brain off, you know. I was still gaming in my head. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. You know, I kind of, my hands were shaky. I just, I felt awful. I was like having gamer withdrawal. It was a horrible, horrible experience, and it was a real surprise at how much the games had meant to me. It worked for you, but do you think that would work for um, everyone in just going quote unquote cold turkey and just throwing the systems away or the computer, uh, you know, deleting your account. Do you think that would work for everybody? I don't know if it would work for everybody. My sense is that it would not. It's not the best way to do it. Uh, with most addictions to just go cold turkey like that, it probably has the lowest chances of success. I think the big mistake is that if you don't have a support system in place, you're going it alone. 
And going it alone is oftentimes what drives people to gaming in the first place. You feel alone. You feel like no one appreciates you. You go to gamings because you find community. You find respect. You find, you know, power. You, you can actually do things that you can't do in real life. Um, and so, yeah, to go it alone, you'll, you'll experience those feelings immensely so, and that oftentimes drives you right back to the game. So, yeah, I would, I would definitely try to make sure that if you decide to get away from gaming, that the people in your life, the important people, your friends, the family, the people you live with, uh, even maybe your coworkers, know what's at stake, and they can help be your support system so that when you don't have the strength to just say no or we run across something and you feel like that, you know, I got to do this, I got I to game again or I got to do this, I'm missing out on this or that, they're there to help you out because otherwise – I think the odds of uh, you falling back into your same, you know, patterns are there. And that's really one of the trademarks of uh, of addiction anyways, is this uh, potential for immediate relapse. If you have an alcoholic and you give him a, a, a shot, he could be in as deep as he's ever been before, even if he's been 10 years sober. And for a serious, actual video game addict, uh, they might be, you know, away from the game for a while. But the second they log back in or they, you know, they play that certain game or maybe any game, it depends, uh, they might suddenly be just as deep as ever were before, and that's a tough situation to be in. Okay, we're talking to Ryan Van Cleve. He wrote a book called Unplugged, My Journey into the Dark World of Video Game Addiction. We'll continue the conversation. We'll get more into the book, and we'll take your calls. 888-GO-FOR-IT, 888-463-6748. you want to send an email, you can do that at geekspeakradioshow.com. Comments at geekspeakradioshow.com is what it is. You can send it there, and I'll ask Ryan when we come back on Geekspeak Radio Show. Geekspeak Radio Show will be right back. 